we can't say obviously that everything's going to go perfect in 2021. There's gonna, we're still in the middle of a pandemic. There's still some weird things going on. But I do know one thing is God may not change all the things that go on outside, but he wants to do something inside of you. And so 2021 is a time to reflect and to get some great things going on in your own personal life. As, as uh, we just heard, you know, from, K- from Caleb is that, that uh, we, we are encouraging everybody to do a Bible reading plan this year. So if you could read the New Testament in one year, and it's basically about a chapter a day, and it, all you need to do is go to YouVersion app, which is the Bible app, that I use and that a lot of people use. And you can go in there and they'll actually have uh, uh, the, the setup. Or you can go to our website. And right on our website, you just click on the link that we give you and it'll get you right to there. And it can go onto your computer and you can save it on your computer. You can save it on your phone. Uh, or of course, you can actually just do it in your regular Bible, which many of you would rather do it that way. But at least it tells you uh, how to keep going. It'll actually give you reminders in the Bible app if you want to do that. But let's just read the word. Let's just get into it, you know? Uh, the Old Testament's great, but that takes you a couple years, which you can do. I do that all the time. I do two years of doing the Old Testament, then I do a year of doing my New Testament, and that's what I do all the time. But man, we really believe, man, getting the Gospels and getting into those things is going to really help you out a lot. Uh, we are going to have communion uh, in a little bit. So if you did not get your communion cup, you can certainly get up now and go get your communion cup. Those of you that, that are joining us online, uh, right now would be a good time to go get some crackers and get some juice and put it next to your computer or wherever you're at. And then we're going to have communion at the end of the service. Why don't you grab a Bible and turn to John chapter 16. John chapter 16. And uh, you have some time to get there. While you're getting there, I'm going to do what I like to do and tell stories. And uh, so I work out. Okay, I just said my first lie of the year. I, I, I used to work out. I, you know, other people have New Year's resolutions that are like, hey, I'm gonna start going to the gym, I'm gonna lose weight. My New Year's resolution is I am done with going to the gym. I told my wife, I said, that's it, let's stop paying. I'm done with the gym. Uh, it, 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 when you have a body like mine that's just naturally beautiful, why wreck it? Uh, no, uh, I, I stop with uh, anything that makes me have to go, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do that anymore because, you know, you, I'm not going to pop a vein and the blood start shooting out or whatever. So I go, at my age, it gets a little scary in there. But when I used to go to the gym, okay, when I used to go to the gym, I actually would ride the bike was one of the things I did would ride the stationary bike for about a half hour you ever do that and so I'm I always bring my book and I'm kind of riding there and I had the one with the big old seat and the seat in the back and I just kind of ride this is my impersonation of, of riding a bike and and reading and and at the end of my 30 minutes it would sit down and go you just you just ro- rode 3.2 miles and I'm like Woo-hoo! I just rode 3.2 miles and I can go home and have pie. You know, this is awesome. I, I did 3.2 miles. And then, you know, and when you're at the gym, there's, there's some good things about it, some bad things about it. You know, one of them is always that guy. There always seems to be that one guy next to you that, you know, sweaty. You know, the guy that just like it's pouring out, shakes his long flowing hair and it's like makes it rain all over you. And, and I'm like, what, what's going on? And stuff, but I did my 3.2 miles. But if you think about it, I really didn't go anywhere, right? I didn't go 3.2 miles. I was on a stationary bike. It's called a stationary, I mean, I I didn't even move an inch, nothing. But here I am in Colorado. I could be riding a bike out in Colorado. Then I could be doing 3.2 miles and seeing all the visuals. I could actually have real rain on me, the sun on my back. It could be beautiful. I could be seeing all those different things. That's something to cheer about. And I think a lot of times in our Christian walk, we have gotten to where we're really, our Christianity is a bike ride that is stationary, that we really don't go anywhere, that we have Christian faith, but we're not seeing any sights. We just have this sweaty person next to us splashing all over or whatever. You know, and if your Christian walk is really just coming to church one week, a, a week on Sunday or every other Sunday, you know, and just sitting in a pew, then pew is probably a really good word to express what your Christian walk is like. 
right? And, and, and so I, what we're going to do today, and as we go along, man, I, I'm excited about the series that we're going to be having for, throughout the year, but they're all built to grow us in our faith, to get us to move from our stationary Christianity, the lethargic Christianity, and you know it. You know you don't like it, but you don't know how to get out of it, and we want to help you. That's why we're doing the Bible reading. That's why we want to get your devotions going. That's why we got to get you in a life group. That's why you got to be able to do these things, because life is more than a stationary Christianity. Man, we need to see the sights. We need to be in the sights. We need to be in our relationship with God and not just sit in our relationship with God. So our series is called The Calling, which is all about um, discipleship. And so uh, as we often do at the beginning of the year, we talk about our purpose statement and we talk about our core values. And, and one of those is, is, is all of those have to do with our discipleship program. And so today it's called a calling. And uh, uh, today, specifically today, it's called Relationship Matters. So before we go any further, and we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit. So let's pray and let's ask the Holy Spirit to do something wonderful in and through us today. Lord God, we thank you so much for all that you have for us and all that you do for us. But there's a sense that where we want to be, we not just want to be in a relationship, we want to feel that relationship, we want to be bold in that relationship, we want to move in that relationship, we want to go somewhere. And so Holy Spirit, we invite you to fall freshly upon us, move within us, and awaken our soul, awaken my soul, oh God. And this is what we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, do you have your Bibles or device? Why don't you turn, or uh, let's look at uh, verses uh, 12 through 15 of chapter 16. And this is Jesus talking to his disciples, and he's in the upper room. He's going he's gonna to be crucified the next morning, but he's talking to his disciples, and he's going to be talking to them about the gift of the Holy Spirit that he's given to them. The whole chapter, uh, chapter 16, is all about that, but I'm going to look at verse 12. I have much more to say to you, more than you can now bear. But when he, the spirit of truth, comes, he will guide you into all the truth. He will not speak on his own. He will speak only what he hears. And he will tell you what is yet to come. He will glorify me because it is from me that he will receive what will, he will make known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the spirit will receive from me what he will make known to you. Basically what Jesus is saying is this. He says, the Father has made everything known to me, the Son. Everything that's the Father, he's given to me, the Son. But me, the Son, I am making known things to the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's role is to make things known to you. He says, when I, when I die on the cross, I'm gonna rise from the grave, and et cetera, et cetera, but I'm gonna be up in heaven. But it's the Holy Spirit that's gonna be active in your life. And he says, I'm gonna make, and he's gonna make known the will of the Father to you, Okay? Father to the Son, the Son to the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit into you. When we receive Christ, it's really the Holy Spirit that dwells us. So here's my question. How are you in that connection with the Holy Spirit and understanding the will of the Father? Because God is always doing a work around you. He's always doing something around you. How are you in your relationship with the God and the Holy Spirit that you can know the will of the Father? See, we have to work on these things, and these things are really important. Years ago, there was a um, Gatorade commercials that, that literally said, uh, Gatorade for that deep down body thirst. Do you remember that? Gatorade for that deep down body thirst. And you remember those people, like, they were drinking yellow Gatorade, and yellow sweat would come out of them. You remember that? And they are drinking green Gatorade, and green sweat oozed off their neck, and you know, all this different stuff. It's like Gatorade for that deep not, no, 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 not just for the people that just want a little bit of water or some Pepsi. No, this is for the deep down body thirst when you really need it. Well, I'm here to tell you the Holy Spirit is for that deep down soul thirst. Do you have it? Do you have that deep down soul thirst? Because that's what the Holy Spirit, and he doesn't want to just go up here. He wants to go in every crevice of you. Hey, so here's our purpose statement. Okay, and, and it's, it's what we're going to be kind of looking at. Our purpose statement, if you've been wondering, at Authentic Life Church, welcome. Some of you guys are new here today. Glad, you, glad you're here. But our purpose statement is uh, building authentic relationships. So having real, deep, not surfacy relationships with God and with others. 
That's what our purpose is all about, to, to have build in, uh, in us these deep relationships. But the only way that can really happen is if we allow the Holy Spirit to work in and through us, where we have a deep relationship with God the Father through the Holy Spirit, but we also allows us to have a deeper and a more authentic relationship with each other. And that's a big deal. So we're gonna look at two points when it comes up to that. The first one is this, if you're taking notes, um, but you can do that on the version. Uh, just click events and Authentic Life Church will be there. Uh, I cannot be what I am meant to be. Get that again. I cannot be what I am meant to be unless I am filled with the Spirit. I will stand on that rock. I will stand on that premise. I cannot be what I am meant to be unless I am filled with with the Holy Spirit of God. Uh, let's look at another verse, John 14. So it's still in the upper room. Uh, this is a little bit before the verse we just looked at, obviously, because that was chapter 16, this is chapter 14. But look at it. He goes, if you love me, keep my commands. Boy, we could stop right there. We could have a whole sermon just on that, right? If you love me, Jesus says, then you would keep my commands. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate, speaking of the Holy Spirit, to help you and be with you forever. Who is he? He's the Spirit of truth. The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you, you know him, for he lives with you and will be in you. I will not leave you as orphans. I will come to you. You know, uh, I don't know if you know this, but radio waves and TV waves, you know that those are all around us? I mean, they're just constantly, they're going through us. They're, they're everywhere. You can't see them, but they're there, okay? But the only way, you can't walk around and go, you know what? I feel like listening to Caleb right now. Oh, I promised myself I would never do that again, right? But, uh, uh, but, but you know, you just can't go, oh, do, 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 and then all of a sudden you can now hear Caleb or some, your rock and roll station or talk radio. You can't. You need a radio device with the proper antenna and stuff to receive those. The, the, all the waves are everywhere. Or let's take TV, right? TV waves are passing through you. They're all over the place. But you need a dish, right? And then it comes in, it takes all, it puts them all in the TV. Isn't that a trip? But if you don't have that dish, you can sit around all day and just stare at your TV, you know, and go, hey, what's happening, you know? No, you need something. In the same way, it's kind of like when Jesus comes into our life, he's that conduit to where the Holy Spirit, now we can see him and know him. So the world does not know what the Holy Spirit's doing because they don't see him or know him. But you, if you're a believer in Jesus Christ, you have him not only with you, but in you. Look at this verse, verse 17 again. But you know him. Why do you know him? Because he lives with you and will be in you. The Holy Spirit for that deep down soul thirst. The waves of what he's doing, because God is always doing a work around you, always. And I'm wondering, are you paying attention? Are you joining him? Do you see what he's doing? Are you participating? Because if not, then you have a stationary bike Christianity. If not, then you're not going anywhere. You're a Christian, but you're not really going anywhere. You know, it's like this glove. Let's say you at Christmas and you get some gloves and, and, and you go to put it on and it, it's an interesting thing and you can't get it on any further, but you're trying so hard, but you realize that someone has sewed all of the fingertips up and you can't get your hand in there. That's kind of like the stationary Christianity. Here you have uh, the, the, the glove would be you and, and this is the hand of God. And because we can sew up our little fingertips, God's hand cannot really move in our life like he should. The Holy Spirit wants to do something within you. He wants to do a work, not only just within you, but through you. But a lot of times we get all constipated, or that might not be the best word, but <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> all believers have God in their heart, period. All believers have God in their heart, but not all believers have actually given their heart to God. And that's the difference. Let me say that again. All believers have God in their heart. When you ask Christ in your life, boom, he's right in there. 
But that doesn't mean you completely give in your heart. That's, that's the lordship thing. And that's where we have the Holy Spirit completely flow within us. There's a quote I got from Max Lucado. He's a famous author in a, in a book called Come Thirsty, all about th- us thirsting for God. And he says, remember, the question is not, how can I have more of the Spirit? But rather, how can the Spirit have more of me? Oh, is it fine to say, oh, I want more of the Holy Spirit? Yeah, but a better question is, how can I give more of myself to the Holy Spirit? How can I be better used by the Holy Spirit? How can I make sure that the hand of God can completely go into me, the glove? How can I make sure that I'm connecting to the the waves of God inside of me? I, I want everybody to do this. If you could lift your hands like you're a cup. So just kind of picture you're a cup like this. Put them them like this. Thank you, everybody. And at home, do this too. So you're a cup. God wants to pour himself into you. He wants to pour his peace. He wants to pour his love. He actually wants to pour knowledge of the world and of the kingdom. He wants to give this to you. Pour as a cup. Now go ahead and put him down. And then, but, but a lot of us are like this. We're closed off. And so you're missing out on what God wants to do in you. You might say, well, God should just do it. Well, God's a gentleman. See, it's a relationship, and relationship matters, okay? And if you're not an open cup, I mean, we, we do this all the time, but, but it's like this, right? If I'm a cup, God can pour into me if I'm open. But if I'm closed-fisted in my life, again, you know, closed-fisted, uh, cutting off the circulation and the gloves or whatever, I'm keeping God from doing what he wants to do in me, and what he wants to do through me. But if I have open hands, I'm now available in so many ways to be able to do what God wants to do in my life. And if you're ever wondering, why isn't God using me more? Or why is my Christianity boring? Why does it seem stagnant? Why do I'm not going anywhere? Well, it's because you're on a stationary bike called Christianity that you just are there. Because, and maybe this is it, you're a believer Who's, who has God in your heart, but you haven't really given your heart completely to God. That's what we need to do. So to be all that I'm meant to be, I must have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. I must be filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, and let's, let's, let's look at our, our core values. So here's our core values here. And this is what we believe is our discipleship process. We, 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 it's not a system. These all need to be going on at the same time. But if you look at them, it's right here, right? right? We have worship, we have connect, we have serve, we have give, we have invite. All of these have to do with our relationship to God, this, this uh, vertical relationship with God. But they also all have to do with our horizontal relationship with each other. Uh, you know, we worship together, et cetera, et cetera. And I'll explain that later. But let's look at a couple of these. You know, worship, connect, uh, and, and, and even give. If you think about those, they really have to do big time with, with, with this. Right? When I worship. Now, when I worship, uh, like if I'm doing in the singing portion of worship, often you might even see, I might have both hands and I, and I turn them like this. You know, sometimes I'm like this, but, but something like this. And I'm actually picturing myself as a cup. You don't need to do that, but, you know, but I want to be a cup. And I picture sometimes when I'm singing, Lord, just fill me, you know? But worship is more than just the singing portion, right? W- worship is all kinds of things. It's when I'm serving. I'm worshiping God. Here, here's a good idea of, of, you want to know what worship is? Worship cannot really be worship without sacrifice. And again, that's another rock I'll stand on. Scripture tells us this, et cetera, et cetera. Worship, it connotes with it, it, it is connected with it, is sacrifice. Uh, even coming to church today, there's a sacrifice. You might say, it was no sacrifice at all. Yeah, but you have other things you could have done. So God knows that when we make the attempt, when we go to church, when we watch online pay, or participate online, that, that we're, we're sacrificing. When we give, when we are doing our tithes, that's sacrifice. When we're serving in the children's department or, or greeting, there, there's, some, there's some sacrifice that's going there. All of those are worship. When I get off myself and think about others above myself, that's worship. Also, when you think about connect, the reason why we're really wanting you to get in the word of God is so that you will connect with him, you know? Or even give. Give, you can do that with your time and talents or whatever, but tithing is another thing. Think about tithing. God asking us to give 10% of all we bring in so that we can be a part of the movement of what he's doing. That's sacrificial. Again, that's worship. 
they're all together. And, and, and some of us would like to separate and say, well, I'll worship with singing, but I won't worship with tithing. I'll, I'll worship with serving, but I won't worship with ever inviting anybody to church. No, nope. all of it is what we need to be doing. So to be all that I'm meant to be, I need the Holy Spirit to pour into me, to fill me. And I picture that I want him to ooze out of me. You know, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> right? That I'm just this little squeegee sponge and he's filling me up and then you come and, and it comes out and bursts out and the Holy Spirit's everywhere. That's what I want. I personally want that. You don't, you might not want to be that, you know, you don't want to be all squishy, but I do. That's why I'm not going to the gym anymore. <laughs> okay. I cannot be all I'm meant to be without being filled with the Holy Spirit, but I cannot do point number two. I cannot do all I'm meant to do unless I'm connected with others you know, connected to the church, connected with us. I cannot do all I'm meant to do unless I'm connected with others. Lone Ranger Christianity, Lone Ranger, not Lone Ranger, Lone Ranger Christianity is not a real thing. Yes, I, can, I need to have my individual relationship with God. Yes, I need to have quiet times. But nowhere are we called to just be by ourselves. I know some people are out there saying, ah, online church is gonna be the new way it's gonna be. Eventually that's what it's gonna be. Heck no. It can't, it can't be church. You can be participate in a church online, but you're, you can't be the church. To be in the church is we need to rub shoulders. By definition, church means to collectively be together. And so I, I cannot do all I'm meant to do. I can do some things. And I might even come close to some of the stuff that I'm meant to do, but I cannot do all that I'm meant to do unless I'm connected with the body of Christ, unless I'm connected with others, period. I cannot do. Philippians 2, 4 says this, do not merely look out for your own personal interests, but also for the interests of others. Boy, is that counterculture or what? Our culture sits around and says, hey, I need to take care of my stuff. It's mine, it's me, I got me, me and my homies or whatever. And it says, no, but this goes counter. It says, no, not just your stuff, but others. Not just your interests, but others' interests. There's more to my life than just me. And in fact, if it's just a me life, it's gonna be a weak life, truly, right? And so an authentic faith is selfless. You want a true authentic faith? It needs to be selfless. You know, the reason why I wanna mature as a Christian, you know, and, 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 and I fear my immaturity sometimes, but I wanna mature. I keep, you know, even as a pastor, I keep wanting to grow. I wanna mature as a Christian you know, and, 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 and be more selfless. And I fear that my immaturity and my selfishness, because I'm still selfish, but I fear that my immaturity and my selfishness, uh, I fear that not because I believe God's gonna kick me out of his kingdom, because that's secure. I, you know, I'm not gonna lose my salvation, but I fear it because I won't be able to do all that I'm meant to do. I love God so much. I want to be all that he wants me to be. I want to do all that he wants me to do. I want to participate. What I fear about my immaturity and my selfishness is that I will not be able to be a blessing like I am intended to be or could be. And in the same time, I will miss the blessings that are intended for me. You know, God has rewards, not just in heaven, but right here on earth that are so much for me to receive. And he's equipped me and he's equipped you. And yes, we should fear our immaturity and we should fear our selfishness, not because we'll lose our salvation, but because we will not have done all that was intended. And when I stand before the heavenly father one day and Jesus is sitting right there, the one who indwells me, the one who gave his life for me, I wanna in turn say, I gave my life for you. That matters to me. That relationship matters to me. You know, ministry in its purest form is God dependent and God empowered. I need to be, you know, God dependent and God empowered. Uh, you know, uh, David in, in, psalm, in a psalm, he's gonna be talking about how, you know, he goes to battle and he goes, he has these different weapons and he goes, but it's not the weapons that win the battle that are in my hand. It's the weapons that are in my heart. And so here it is in Psalm 44, six through eight. He says, I put no trust in my bow. My sword does not bring me victory, but you give us victory over our enemies. You put our adversaries to shame. In God, we make our boast all day long. 
and we will praise your name forever. You know, another verse, some will trust in horses, some will trust in chariots, but I will trust in the name of the Lord. You ever heard that? You know, it's like the same thing. Some will trust in their finances. Some will trust in their cars. Some will trust in their homes. Some will trust in their family. But I choose to trust in the name of the Lord. So I want to be God-dependent and God-empowered. God-dependent means this. It means I'm not self-dependent. I'm not self-reliant. I'm God-dependent. That each of my movements, each of the things that I need to do are based on my dependency on God. And if he says it, that, 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 that I'm going to believe it, and that settles it. I depend upon him. If he asks me to be a tither, I'm gonna be a tither. If he asks me to serve, I'm gonna serve. If he asks me to love, I'm going to love. But I'm gonna be God dependent. And God empowered means that I need his energy to fulfill me. For that deep down soul thirst, I need the Holy Spirit. God empower and so that I can be utilized by him. And that's a, that's, a, that's a big deal. And so what, what's the main goal of that? To live beyond yourself. I want to live beyond me. I mean, go outside of myself. Uh, there's a verse that I, a lot of times in weddings, you know, there's a, a great thing, you know, where, where you know, uh, uh, in, in Ecclesiastes 4.12, uh, in talking about how couples or people together or friends need to be together, it says, though one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. And a cord of three strands is not quickly broken. So where if you're just individual, but you, you need a partner, you need somebody with you. But then it gives this cord of three strands. The third strand is God. I need a buddy in my life. I need a partner in life. I need a couple people in my life in order that I'm not gonna be overpowered. But I also need that third strand, which is God. Remember, I need the vertical relationships so the horizontal relationships can work out. You know, we need each other. Do you have anybody in your life that's watching your spiritual back? Some of you might say, well, I have my spouse. Yeah, that's good. Do you have somebody else? Who's watching your spiritual back? Who's watching your mind? Your spouse is good, but sometimes they can be the problem. You know, sometimes that, the marriage is hard. Who's there helping you through these things? Who's watching your back? You know, I, I like, the, like this. It's like when my taillight goes out, I don't really know my taillight's going out, right? Somebody else needs to say, hey, Bruce, your taillight's out. Now, it doesn't do much because I still won't get it fixed, but uh, not until a cop pulls me over, and even then it's a little iffy, you know? I don't know how, if you're like that. It's like, well, because the next day I forgot that my taillight's out. I just don't see my taillight. So then someone like Ray, my buddy Ray, is always telling me, hey, your taillight's out. And so the only way it really gets fixed is when my wife for Father's Day or my birthday goes and looks on YouTube how to fix a taillight and then and put, fixes my taillight and goes, happy Father's Day. And I go, thank you. I was waiting for that, you know? It's a Fosdick thing. You know, don't judge me. I was born that way. The, uh, but, you know, we all need someone who's watching our back, checking out our taillight, making sure those things are going on. Or, you know, it's like, or, or like my zipper, if my zipper's up, my biggest paranoia is that my zipper will be down when I'm preaching one day. So I always check every time before I come up here. I'm like, what if? You know, that would be horrible. And no one would tell me. That's the thing I know about you guys. No one's going to go, hey, pastor. You know, that, that, that doesn't look good either, you know? Or, or, or you're, you know, you're sitting there, you're talking to somebody, you see a piece of lettuce in their teeth, or you're hoping it's lettuce that's in their teeth, you know, but, but they have lettuce in their teeth. Or, or my wife, my wife is always a person, she has what I would call pepper phobia, that she always has this fear that she's gonna have a piece of pepper in her teeth. And so I've been, so we just celebrated a couple weeks ago our 33rd wedding anniversary. <laughs> Yep, me and old Pepper Teeth have been married for 33 <laughs> years. But she always has, I, I'm not kidding, she, she knows exactly what. every rest, So we've known each other for 35 years. And if we're at a restaurant with somebody, I, I can just believe that every time she goes, do I have pepper in my teeth? Like this. I've known her for 35 years. I don't think I've ever seen pepper in her teeth, ever. But here she is. So I can't tell if she's trying to be sexy, trying to turn me on. I mean, she is sexy and she does turn me on, but I don't think she needs to do this. But she always goes, do I have pepper in my teeth? You're so cute. You are. You can't believe I'm, I'm telling that story? Oh, great story. <laughs> hey, we all have struggles in life. 
We need someone to be able to, in our spiritual walks, to tell us we have pepper in our teeth. We need, in our spiritual walks, to say, your tail light's out. You're not noticing this. You can't see it on your own, and we need that. So here's the question. Who is watching your back? Who do you have? You know, who's spiritually helping you? When you're in times of need, who's talking with you? Maybe a better question is, whose back are you watching? Who are you? Because we need to be pouring into other people, not just being poured into. We need to be pouring into others. In fact, honestly, when we pour into others, our own personal growth goes. Again, we need to have God dependence and we need to be able to have God empowerment so that I can better love others. I need him to fill me, the Holy Spirit, to be all that I'm meant to be. I need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and to do all that I'm meant to do. I need to be able to be connected with other people. And that's a big deal. And again, if we look at, at our core values, if you look again, they all, we worship better together. We do. I don't have to be with you to worship, but it's better. I don't have to have the worship team lead me in worship, but it's a heck of a lot better. You know, it's just great. And, and to be able to be connected, not just with God, but with each other. That's why life groups are such a central part of who we are as an authentic life church. Or to serve. If I'm not serving, I'm missing out on part of what I was created for. If I'm not giving, I'm missing out on a big part of what I was. We're most like God when we give. He gave his son. You know, he, he, he gives me gifts. He does all these different things and I'm supposed to be like him and then to invite others. When we're inviting people to Authentic Life Church, you're not just inviting them to church, right? You're inviting them to a movement. You might be inviting them to receive Jesus because they're gonna receive Jesus here. You're inviting them to be a part of that which you know is healthy for them. When you invite people to, to Authentic Life Church, you're not just inviting them to church, you're inviting them to a movement of God because we're not a stagnant church, are we? We're, we're, we're out of our seats, get out and do, do this, take care of people, love people, do the business of God. That's the cool thing. So if we put all that together to truly be a disciple of Christ, to, to understand your calling, to, to do that, uh, you need to be, uh, to be all that you can be. And that's to be connected with the Holy Spirit and to do all that you're meant to do. You need to be connected to other people. That's what we need to do. Relationship matters. What I'd like to do is, is, is close in prayer, but before I just want to remind you uh, of that, that quote. Uh, remember, the question is not, how can I have more of the Spirit, but how can the Spirit have more of me? Father, we thank you that our relationship to you matters, and to you, your relationship with us matters. I sometimes sit around and wonder, how can you love someone like me? And then the other times I sit around and go, wow, you are such a great God that you desire to love me. So thank you for loving us, oh God. And Holy Spirit, thank you for teaching us today. Thank you for the breath of your word. Thank you for the, the, the movement that stirs within us. And thank you that you've called us to something larger than ourselves. So fill us as a cup as we continue in our worship time, in our time of communion. May you be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, we're gonna take communion. And I, uh, uh, there's, you know, you peel back the top part and there's bread and then there's, a, you peel back the next one and there's the, the cup. And you know, Jesus in that upper room, uh, he told his disciples, he said, you know, I'm gonna go, just like we were reading. And the Holy Spirit's gonna come. But from the moment now until I return, I want you to do this in remembrance of me. Do what? He said, take the bread, which represents my body, and drink the cup, which represents my blood that is shed for you. I'm offering myself to you, and I want you to remember this until I come. But what's a cool part of that is, is a thing that, that I learned from Campus Crusade for Christ, which is called spiritual breathing. And, and I want you to picture this. Spiritual breathing is out with the bad air and it's a time of confession. And so use this time as a time of confession, but in, take in the good air, which is the Holy Spirit, the empowerment to be able to live the Christian life. Out with the bad, confession, in 
with the Holy Spirit filling me, renewing me. And so I'm gonna give each of us just some time uh, just to pray in your own words and use this to confess. Maybe it's confession that you're not taking your walk seriously, that you're stagnant. Maybe it's confession of a specific sins that you need to do and have a clean heart. But then somewhere in your time, you need to <sighs> breathe in and say, Holy Spirit, thank you for forgiving. Thank you for doing what you do. Empower me to live my life. Lord God, would you talk to each of us? Thank you for conviction. And so we actually want to receive that, that gift of conviction of what we're missing. But we also want to receive with thankfulness the gift of your son, Jesus Christ. So just take this time and talk to him in your own words. Lord, we're so thankful for what you did on the cross for us. We're also just so thankful that you give us the greatest gift, which is forgiveness. Forgiveness of our sins, forgiveness of our, of our lethargicness, th forgiveness of our, just this apathy we can have. But Lord, we don't wanna stay there. So Holy Spirit, empower us to live the life that we are meant to live, to be able to do and to be all that you've called us to do and be. And we give you thanks. And Jesus, we do remember what you did on the cross for us. It's in your name we do pray. Let's take the bread and then let's drink the cup together. Scripture tells us when we ask for forgiveness, we now have what a phrase called clean hands and, and pure heart. And so let's stand before him now. Let's worship our King. Let's be those cups uh, to overflowing. Let's lift holy hands because they are clean. And let's lift our hearts up to him because they are pure.